gynecomastia on testosterone and of course anabolic steroids. Continuing with my series on testosterone, what I see is an expert testosteronologist with men on testosterone, of course, and steroids. Gynecomastia for men on testosterone is absolutely one of the most top important issues that I deal with. And other doctors, any doctor taking care of a man on testosterone is going to have to understand this intimately. Here we go. Gynecomastia is the benign growth of breast glandular tissue in men. It's caused by an imbalance of hormones, of course, testosterone and estrogen, mainly estradiol. That's E2. Men on testosterone taking creams, gels, pellets, or commonly intermuscular esters of testosterone, sipinate, enanthate, propanate, and for all you guys overseas, sustenon 250, they may experience this to different degrees. It's very interesting that this is a natural physiologic process for many adolescent boys experience as they go into puberty from about 12, 13 to about 16, 17, they'll experience transient, usually gynecomastia, usually resolves in about six months to two years. But a lot of these boys, a lot of my patients come to me saying that they experienced this during puberty and some of them have seen doctors, even some of them have taken medicines for that or had the surgery for that. Amazing history. The physiologic process of how testosterone converts to estrogen via aromatization is what is responsible for gynecomastia. Health conditions that may worsen this for a man that's on testosterone or a man that is not on testosterone from any age. This is why you need a very good history by an expert physician. Hyperthyroidism, obesity, especially as men get older, and age itself can worsen and cause gynecomastia. Liver disease, classic with alcoholic cirrhosis. Kidney disease, did you know that 50% of men that are undergoing dialysis will experience gynecomastia? Now, these are men that are not on testosterone. Medications that can cause gynecomastia, so important to know this in your history. Doctors, please pay attention. Antiandrogens like finasteride, Propecia for the hair, and dutasteride, BPH, but it's a DHT 1 and 2 blocker. It's also used off-label for hair loss. Isn't this paradoxic that this can cause gynecomastia. I don't think a lot of people realize that. Other medications classically used, commonly used for CHF, heart failure, hypertension, resistant hypertension, calcium channel blockers, special types of them, spironolactone. This is classic. This is a potassium sparing diuretic. It's used in bodybuilders and fitness people, even the fitness girls. And I've had so many men call me up and tell me the history. They've used this from pro guys, professional guys, fitness, board short guys, physique guys, and they've experienced worsened complications of gyno. And they realized, because they did their research, that it was because their guru gave them spironolactone. This is also a dangerous medication because it affects the heart because it increases potassium. Be very careful with this. Medications continued. Obviously, testosterone itself in the dose, the type of testosterone, the base ester, other estrogenic steroids. There are many antidepressants, classic antidepressants, tricyclic antidepressants. These are the old-fashioned ones, but they're used commonly still and off-label for many, many types of 
common medical issues by different types of doctors all around the world. And also anti-anxiety medications like Valium. That's a classic medication. When you use these together, you'll see gynecomastia. Take your history. Antibiotics can cause gynecomastia. Stomach medications and medicines for heartburn, GERD, otherwise meds that are known that are to be antihistamines, over-the-counter cymetidine. This is amazing. All these medications can cause and worsen gynecomastia. Alcohol, we talked about the relations to the liver and cirrhosis. Even just someone who just drinks regularly or even sometimes spontaneously can experience transient gynecomastia. Amphetamines, medicines that are used like Adderall and Ritalin for ADD can worsen a man who's sensitive to gyno, on testosterone or off testosterone can worsen gynecomastia. Marijuana, obviously dose dependent and not for every man. Heroin and opioids. So many men in this world are on chronic pain medications and the interplay of these medications can worsen and cause gynecomastia. Managing men on testosterone with gynecomastia. You have to do a history, a detailed history has to be taken by an expert internist and more specifically a testosterologist. That's an internist who's focused on taking care of men on testosterone. Even men that I've seen taking up to one gram a week of aromatizable testosterone has no gynecomastia. And even men that take a little bit of topical gel can have different degrees of gynecomastia. Two types of gynecomastia. There's sensational gynecomastia, that you feel the sensation and the burning and the irritation, it's uncomfortable, not to mention shirts and vests that can rub on it, versus in addition to lumpiness and mass that cause secondary to gynecomastia, two types. You can see that the medical manifestation of gynecomastia, like so many other things in the world with medicine, is multifactorial. There's genes and there's so many other variables that have to be considered. Of course, when evaluating a man after the history on testosterone for gynecomastia, you have to look at labs. Here's what needs to be done. It needs to be a proper methodology, total and free testosterone with a liquid chromatography mass spectroscopy dilution method. This is very important. Also, don't just order a total estrogen. Get an ultra-sensitive estradiol, again, done by the proper technology. You want to do this properly. You want to look at an ultra-sensitive estradiol. I learned years ago not to rely on a total estrogen because there's contamination. You'd think total estrogen, the main estrogen playing the role is estradiol, E2, so get a total estrogen. And for most cases, it's gonna be appropriate, but I've seen men that I've seen super high levels of total estrogen, even on massive doses of Romanase inhibitors. They have actually no estrogen, but there's other medications or other constituents that are cross-reacting and causing contamination. I figured this out. I had to call LabCorp's chief of laboratory analysis. This is an MD, PhD guy, super smart scientific guy, and he told me what was happening is the total estrogen can be contaminated, a false positive. So he said, always get the ultra-sensitive estradiol. That's for you guys, so relevant. Otherwise, don't even get labs looking at estrogen. In the end of the day, when you're on testosterone for years and years and years, you don't need to keep checking estrogen. Put it all together for the symptoms for the man and take care of that man, you'll see. Microdosing is the main methodology, I'll get right to the point for you guys, on how men can be cared for long-term for years, adjusting the actual dose of testosterone. Most of it is intermuscular, small doses of esters. Some men using topical androgens and gels may like that and have to use that or pellets, but in the end of the day, it's very interesting that men that use topicals, it's hard to control, they don't feel so great, and you can see a paradoxic lowering of androgen and increase of estrogen because of the delivery through the skin. Please, men, 
Give some comments right here. I've learned this over years, and that's why this has to be personalized man per man. Now, using systemic anti-estrogens. Let's roll the sleeves up. Of course, I use these very carefully. Aromatase inhibitors and specific selective estrogen receptor modulators. Tamoxifen, for an example. These should be used last resort and minimally with monitoring. Continued close monitoring for men that are on testosterone with anti-estrogens is critical. So many men come to me from anti-aging facilities or testosterone clinics or their own doctor or the underground and they're on aromatase inhibitors or tamoxifen and they don't feel well. Poor mood, very poor libido and even tendon injuries and other issues that can happen. And it's interesting, they say, doc, do I need to be on all these medicines at the same time? And the answer, common sense answer is absolutely no. They can be used, but you have to be careful with these. My concern, as everyone knows, if you watch my videos, is for the cardiovascular and the hypercoagulable side effects of these drugs. We know that even small amounts of aromatase inhibitors will lower the HDL. If you're a dangerous guy that has coronary disease or a history of it with all the risk factors, you're playing with fire here, especially if you're living on it long term. I've seen it. Unfortunately, I've seen heart attacks. I've seen blood clots secondary to being utilizing tamoxifen. Please be careful. Most men on testosterone can enjoy testosterone for a lifetime without gonochromastia by adjusting the dose and frequency of the testosterone delivery itself. Microdosing, guys, it is what it is. You have to work closely with a physician on this. You have to look at everything else everything else going on. You have to look at the guy's underlying medical issues and medications, and then you have to tailor it together to get the best outcome, safe outcomes, long-term outcomes, because you're on testosterone, like I say over and over, you're going to be on it for life. Can you live on a aromatase inhibitor or tamoxifen for life? No. No one's going to agree with that whatsoever. No one. Aromatase inhibitors and selective estrogen receptor modulators, again, can be used very limited. Very limited, you could hit a reset button. This is a secret. You can use them, hit a reset button for guys. Some guys can be closely monitored, and you hit the reset button two weeks or so, like tamoxifen or AIs, and they come off and they go, Doc, we change things, and it goes away. Some men require a little bit of this use, maybe once a year, twice a year, and that's probably okay. You have to understand the doctor has to work personally. If you have, again, heart disease risks or you've had blood clots, I've seen guys with DBTs and pulmonary embolisms, and they're still using these medicines. They just don't know the anti-aging places. They just don't realize this. Be very, very careful. Okay, very complicated set of histories and medicines has to be done for you guys. Please, I really hope... This helps men on testosterone understand gynecomastia. Thank you so much.